on Sunday we were talking about how some athletes just have a certain factor that makes them that have that ha- that makes them have a wide appeal. Like we listed some examples and we said someone like Ali or Ronaldo or Michael Jordan or Kobe or you know like there's some mentality amongst that that group of people that separates them from the rest of athletes. And I wanted to I, I called it the it factor, mm-hmm. but I, I wanted to know what you think that might be. I said it was that they're fully devoted to the art and they're not distracted by other things. You can be good at something, but still not devoted to it fully. You know, it's the, but even the, to the level that, of a professional athlete. Yeah, the, there's distractions for everyone. You see all these NBA players that are sleeping around or partying, drinking a lot. And it, that's just I think that's what separates those people from everyone else. Remember, I've even said or that interview with Muhammad Ali when they asked him, what's the hardest part of, you know, being you? And he said, it's being in bed by 9 p.m. alone. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. But then, I mean, is that the case? I think it is. Because but then, ha, ha, we don't know. <clears throat> Sorry, that was a weird voice crack. But we don't know about the athletes' private lives. We do. I mean, there's so much news leaks about them and stuff. Yeah, but you think that's what it is? Yeah, like, I, I feel think like I think a vast majority of those athletes just don't have that mentality that this is this is what everything life life is only about this sport, and I'm gonna do everything that I can to be the best at this sport. Yeah, but then you look at athletes like because they're getting paid no matter what. They're getting paid no matter what. You have a bunch of high. All these athletes, they made it to the league. They're getting paid no matter what. So what separates? the vast majority from those who truly excel. It's the ones who are who are saying, okay, even at this level that I'm getting paid, I care more about that than the pay, right? What I care about, it's it's something beyond just the pay of the sport, something beyond the fame. It's they want to be, they want to leave a legacy in that sport. Yeah, but okay, if I was thinking about another person that has that it factor, but I've never seen them fight or I've never seen them do anything, mm-hmm. Bruce Lee. Mm-hmm. Bruce Lee is literally world renowned and he's legendary and there's so many people that are fans of him. Yeah. Not just because of his action movies. He just has a legendary status. Yeah. In some way, shape, or form. Yeah. And he didn't really do much. What he, do you mean he, he didn't do much? Or he didn't he, he wasn't a mixed martial or he yo keeps He wasn't a martial artist. Yeah, but that's because he wasn't he he wasn't a Or he was, but but no one's ever seen him fight. Yeah, because he's an he's more of an actor, right? Bruce Lee? Yeah, but that's not what... Or a stuntman? No, you don't know. He, he did act in movies, but that's not why. He was, he was just popular as a... a I mean, I guess... As an entertainer. Movie. As an entertainer. Yeah, an entertainer. Or it's, it's, that's different than MMA. We're talking about sports people solely. Yeah, but he's famous regarding his philosophy. Like, a lot of people talk about Bruce Lee in, in a fighting sense and how he was able to use his body and stuff. Yeah, but it's just different. I mean, it's just, it's just a different... I bet there are other people like him too that were trying to be that kind of person, whatever, um, you know, entertainers, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, I wouldn't say I, w- I wouldn't say he was an entertainer. He just ended up being one. But I wouldn't. Okay, then whatever you want to call it, stuntman. No, it, uh, unaffiliated with media or whatever at all. He yeah. was a martial artist. Yeah, okay, but we just didn't see him a compete. talented martial artist. Yeah. I, martial arts, I don't think, has to be solely in the form of competition. What comprises martial arts is more than just competition, I think. Okay, then what else would it comprise? Oh. Martial arts? Yeah. There's much more than competition to martial arts. It's, again, no, even saying, it's, what, it's what, within what the word a, itself. What makes, it's a martial an art. Art. It's what an makes art. a martial artist so beloved when people can, in general... You, what makes a martial artist so beloved by the people when the people themselves don't see the work? They see the work. They see the work in what whatever actions he's doing. Martial art j- isn't just about competition. And I think that's in the word martial art itself. It's an art. It's an art form. So when he displays that art, people see that. Yes, competition is also a way to display the art, but I think there's numerous ways to display the art. And he was, without a doubt, one of the greatest martial artists. Okay. So you think you think that that factor is just dedicating yourself to something? Yeah, I think it's just not at once you reach a certain level in athletics, I think it's just about 
but it's just about who's distracted and who's not. Who, once you have everything you want, is still going to put in the time to become better than everyone else at that sport. A lot of these, a lot of athletes, what I, what I would think is if they're out here partying, they're out here drinking, you know, sleeping around, then their motivation to get to the NBA was just to do that, you know? It was just to make the money so then they could live that life that they're living right now. But the ones who go above that, they, their motivation wasn't money. Their motivation wasn't to get to that life. Maybe, sure, initially. But then if you want, if going beyond that means they care about that sport more than just more than just what it brings, benefits it brings them in terms of wealth, uh, I mean, status. What about, what about someone like McGregor, mm-hmm. where he was he was like that, but then after a certain point, he just fell off? As as in he didn't have that same mentality yeah. anymore. He, he, the distractions got to him. That's what I'd say. Yeah. But, yeah. Maybe at sense. a certain point, it was, he was... He Overwhelmed was, by the money. Yeah, at a certain point, he said, okay. And I think MMA is also different in that you make more and more money, right, as you become the best. Mm-hmm. So maybe... That's that's like that in every sport. Yeah. The best people always make more money. Yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. But I think to MMA, it's to an even further extent where, I mean, how much do like, anyone that's not top 10 in MMA, how much are they getting he paid? Yeah. yeah. So Unless they're very popular. Yeah. So... I don't know. You think it's too much money at this one time? A lot of people attribute his decline after the Floyd Mayweather fight, where he moved to boxing and he made way more money than he ever did in MMA. Oh, yeah? Like the money got to him? Yeah, he made $100 million off of losing. Yeah. And he didn't he didn't come back to MMA for two years. And when he came back, he went on this massive losing streak. Yeah. I don't know how he lost it, though, you know? Because he kind of he had it, you know? Because he wanted to be... At one point, he was what we're talking okay. about. I feel like he still has it to a certain extent because if you're looking at his thing now, he he st- he still has 100 million. Is he he has way more than that because he has his own business now. Mm-hmm. And he's he's making money in other ways that are not MMA. Mm-hmm. When he's coming back to fighting, it's not for the paycheck. Mm-hmm. It's for something else. For his fans maybe? Well, why would he come back for his fans? I don't know. Maybe he's, he likes he's the fame. The money. He enjoys the, the money. Fame. Is, the money is there. Maybe it's not about money for him. He enjoys the fame. Yeah, but he's he's also he's he's acting in movies and stuff like that now. Exactly, he enjoys the fame. Yeah, but that's it's a separate thing. Why would he want to come back to MMA? For his fans. I don't think it's for his fans. I think he still has some desire to prove himself in the sport, but it's just washed away under yeah. certain circumstances. Because yeah. MMA, it's 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 a hard sport. Mm-hmm. You're getting punched and kicked in the face. Mm-hmm. You're getting you know wrestled and just beat on, mm-hmm. and that's how you make money. Yeah. So if you're already that far out where you don't have to ever come back for money and you still come back, Mm -hmm. I feel like that says something else besides money. Like there's some glimpse of hope. Yeah, that he he can make, so he can make his recovery. Yeah. Get it. Because McGregor fans are going to love this one. Love this take. Yeah, I know. Yeah, maybe. But then there's also the, okay, let's take Khabib, for example. All right. He retired after his dad died. After his dad died, his mom called him and she was like, don't do this anymore. He said, okay, let me finish this last fight and I'll get out of here. And he finished that last fight and he retired. Mm-hmm. And apparently he's been offered a ton of money to come back. $40 million, $50 million. Mm-hmm. He, he refused it all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, a, it's more than the money for some people. Is it more than the money? Yeah. For someone like Ronaldo who went to the Saudi League? <laughs> I think that's that's a, that, that's a that's a retirement plan for him though. He's he's already proven himself as the best player. He yeah, doesn't need to prove himself anymore. I mean, he's, back in the day, he used to he used to criticize people for playing in the Saudi league. He's like, oh, what, what's this bum saying about me? He plays in the Saudi league. Yeah, I know, but it's uh, he's already ma- at a certain point he's made himself the best player, and now for him to play at that age and then it, it would, like tarnish his reputation, I think it's bad for him. This is the best possible outcome for him or the best possible situation for him. Because if he continues to play at Man United or something, it's, sh- it's such a bad look for him. He's, he's, made his rep- he's, he's made such a reputation, and for him to ruin that by continuing to play at such an old age, you know, it's, it's like you just at a certain age just, like you've done enough, you know? <laughs> just, just leave now. 
it, it, your your legacy will be forever forever in mold. Okay, in that case, is it about legacy for some people? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. More than money means legacy. Uh, that's that's what I would say it is. It's, All the time, I don't know, because then there's. I feel like I thought what you were saying was more than money, meaning they're just dedicating themselves to the sport completely. That's nothing about legacy. Nothing about anything. That legacy is a part of that, though. How so? Because they've become with the sport, meaning now they're 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 looking out for the best interests of the sport rather than them. I think that's what it means when you dedicate yourself to the sport. So then when they're looking out for the best interest of the sport, part of that is legacy. You want to leave incredible legacies in that sport. And that and that itself makes the sport better. You know, V there are, there are sports that no one would care about if it weren't for how great players were in that sport. Yeah, that's actually an interesting point that you bring up because I saw I saw this thing the other day. You know, you know about John Jones right now? Mhm. He got injured. And everyone keeps wanting him to fight this young contender named Aspinall. And he, Aspinall's insane. He, he has, I think, total time, or his average time per fight is one minute or something like that. He's had multiple, a lot of fights. And he, he's, he's never made it past the first round, I don't think. And he's, Is he undefeated? No, but the fight that he did lose, he, he, was, he hurt himself. Oh. Meaning he, he already had an, an injury before going into that fight. Oh. And that injury just... He hurt his knee or something. But that's that the it, only fight he lost. I think so. I'm not sure. But he hasn't lost in a long time, at least. And he's the scariest guy in heavyweight at the moment. Yeah. And everyone wants Jones to fight him because he's the interim champion. You know what interim champion is? Yeah. It's like when the champion is injured, the interim. Yeah. 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 So everyone wants him to fight him. But then Jones wants to fight this other guy named Stipe, who is considered to be the all-time great heavyweight. But the problem is Stipe is this old dude now. He's like 45, and he, he limps whenever he walks. But people still want... Or Jones wants to fight him for the legacy, while people want Aspinall to fight Jones, because it's only fair that the champion fights the interim champion. Yeah. And I think I heard someone say something similar, where they said, if Jones loses, because he's never lost officially. I mean, he's lost one fight, but that fight was due to, you can't elbow someone with a 12 to 6 elbow on the ground. And he was doing that because he didn't know. And people were say, or there was people that were saying that the reason why Dana's just letting this behavior go, because if it was any other guy, he wouldn't. But if John Jones loses, it's like MMA, the sport is taking a hit. Yeah, yeah. If John Jones loses, it's it's bad for the sport. Yeah. Because he's never lost. Yeah. And I, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. If you, you, it's 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 a lose lose scenario. Mm-hmm. Or it's a it's a high risk low reward scenario. Yeah. It's it, because. What people want in a sport is greatness. Some some guy to be just insane. not just greatness, but yeah, that's that's a part of it. But they want they want a clear they want a clear pathway. They want it to be complete. They want it to be competitive, meaning they need to know who is better than who. There need there needs to be a clear order. This guy's better than this guy. You need to be able to say. This guy's better than this guy. This guy's better than this guy because uh, because he beat him this many times, right? It has to be straightforward. But if some random guy is just able to beat the greatest guy and then the greatest guy and then, you know, I don't know, the greatest guy goes and beats someone else, it's, there's no hierarchy. There's no ranking. And then you can't objectively say who's better at the sport. Yeah, that's, that's but a, I think that's I, I, the I basis of competition. Know, I don't know if that's the case that people look for that because if you take a if you look at Messi and Ronaldo, that brought an insane amount of coverage to the sport. I yeah, mean, but the Messi sport is already and, the most popular. But Messi sport. and Ronaldo are just so much better than anyone else. Yeah, but then the 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 hype came from the rivalry itself. Yeah, and the football association did a lot to promote that rivalry because yeah, you know, one of the dudes played for FC Barcelona and the other dude played for Real Madrid. Yeah, and they're. You know, the the biggest rivalry in sports history, yeah. probably. Yeah. And that rivalry existed before Messi and Ronaldo. But just because they joined opposite teams, that rivalry got even bigger and bigger. Yeah. And they used... I mean, okay, if we're being completely honest, I don't think Ronaldo... It's like everybody else, and then Ronaldo, and then Messi. Like, Messi is just clearly better. Uh-huh. Like, he, he just mm-hmm. in terms of what he does, he is just he's just better. Okay. Ronaldo might be a better goal scorer, but Messi. In team sports, it's harder because you don't know who's better. Clearly. Yeah, but 
if the rest of the team was bad, Messi could carry them, but Ronaldo can't. Like, Ronaldo couldn't carry that terrible Man United side, but Messi could carry a terrible Barcelona side. And it all happened right, before. All right, just make your point. But <laughs> the media and everybody around around them at the time, they just pushed that rivalry so much to yeah. make it so big. And I brought a lot of attention to the sport of football. Mm-hmm. Is what I'm saying. Even though I don't think it was that close, personally. Like, he's definitely the, the second greatest player. But... Because of the the narratives pushed by the media, people people thought it was insanely competitive, and they were you know they were out competing each other every season. Yeah. And people always tuned in to see if 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 it was Messi or if it was Ronaldo. Yeah, I'm saying I, I, I'm saying I think people want it to be competitive. Yeah, but then if you, I don't know, what if Aspinall ends up being the next great? I don't know. I I just think people are okay. Yeah, yeah. Here's the scenario. Let's say he beats John Jones. And he goes to, and loses to some some guy, that is bad for the sport. Yeah, yeah. That's what people don't want. They want there to be a clear hierarchy. Who's better than who? I think that's the basis of competition. Yeah, but all time, because Jones Jones also passed his prime. Some yeah, people could yeah. would still make the so, argument yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. you know, oh, he would have beaten Aspinall in his prime. It's blah, still blah, blah. I'm one of the people. Still a think, risk. That I'm one of the people that think he should fight him. Because it's only it's the natural order. If you're yeah. in, in interim champion, you should fight yeah. the champion. Yeah. And I want to see because I don't think Jones has proven himself at heavyweight yet. Mm-hmm. Like he beat Cyril Gunn, but he's just this bum. Or mm-hmm. he's not a bum. He's obviously a good fighter. Yeah. But he's he has no he's a good striker, but he has no skill on the ground. Yeah. So if you wrestled it with that guy, you'll you'll beat him in or not me personally because that guy's two hundred sixty pounds. <laughs> but if John Jones, yeah. another two sixty pounder, wrestles with that guy. You could beat him. Yeah. Yeah. So is that really all that it is? Just being super dedicated at something? Can you think of can you think of people outside of the realm of sports that have the same Elon Musk maybe? You think? Yeah. I don't know, because whenever I see Elon Musk it's not like Compare uh, Elon Musk versus someone like Richard Branson, you know? They're They're just more famous. More people know Elon. They, they both had revolutionary ideas, and they both. I I think at at any at any point either of them could have taken it to the next level, but Richard Branson didn't. He does. Uh, he just. He, I, he he resigned super early from his position as CEO, and then he. I don't know a hundred percent of that. You might have to fact check me mm-hmm. on that. But he just does a lot of you know fun things fun things yeah. and elon musk elon musk lives in a shed outside the tesla factory you yeah, know that makes sense and he, he 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 has the money to pull out but he just keeps coming yeah he keeps coming back it's yeah. kind of like what we're talking about with conor mcgregor he wants to do something more it's not about the money for him yeah. so and same with warren buffett like he lives in he lives in the same house he's lived in for so many years it's not about buying more things that makes him happy so you know that makes sense business people the yeah i'm saying even within billionaires there's the high end of billionaires and there's the low end of billionaires interesting i'm i'm trying to think who is able to take their company to the next level you know the the bernard arnold guy not a lot of people know about him but if you think about it he could have rested at whatever whatever brands he had you know he had i don't know what his I don't know if he inherited it or if he started it, but he could have, and he acquired a lot of brands, but there he could have definitely rested, but he's still acquiring more and more brands, you know? Mm-hmm. It's not, at that point, especially once you hit a billion, it's not about money anymore because you can buy anything you want. It's about, you know. Dedicating yourself to your craft. Yeah. There was something that I was thinking about that was kind of like that. Okay, what do, another guy that I was thinking about outside of athletics. I mean, he was an athlete, but Tate definitely has that factor. Like, I don't know. It's 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 kind of an intuitive thing for me. When I see somebody, I'm like, oh, like there's Tate, something about this guy that, I think, that separates him from the rest. I, I I don't think Tate is that. He made most of his money from Hustlers University, mm-hmm. but. I don't know if we can compare Tate to those guys. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not talking about the the logic that you that you ascribed. Uh huh. Where you're saying it's people that were taking 
whatever to the next level. Yeah. Just in terms of how their frame, maybe. Maybe their frame. Frame medic what? I there's something ab- there's something about them. I just call it the it factor because I don't I don't I don't know how else to describe it. Oh, you think Tate has that? I don't think Tate has it. Really? Yeah. He definitely does. I, I think his brother has it more than him. Tristan. I don't know. I I think I don't think they both have it. They're not those kind of guys. They in, I mean they enjoy life a lot. I'm not saying that they're those kind of guys. I'm just saying, in terms of something like whenever I see them. A clip of them. I see a clip they of... They just speak with confidence. Some other guy that I consider to have the factor, like Ronaldo. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I feel like they're, saying, they're similar in a, in a way. I would compare Tate to... But some, I don't know what it is, what that what that similarity is. That similarity is, I think, when they were younger, it's like we were talking about those athletes. What makes Muhammad Ali so much better of a boxer? A bunch of athletes, they just want to get to the point where, you know... It's like Tate and Tristan were broke when they were when they were. But I'm not talking about. Okay, I'm, not talking I'm getting about to Muhammad. that. I'm getting okay. to that. I'm getting to that. They were they were broke when they get when they were when they started, and then to get to the point that they wanted to, they were in that mindset. They were in that mindset that Muhammad Ali is in. Or here's a better way to put it: in everyone starts out with that mindset to make it from broke to the league or broke to, uh, you know, hundred million dollars. Everyone has that mindset. But then it's once you get that money, do you continue with that mindset or do you not continue with that mindset? I feel like people, even after... Okay, let's take Khabib, for example. I feel like Khabib still has that factor, even though he's not fighting anymore. Yeah. There's 100% there's people like that. But... I don't know what it is. What is Tate still doing? What is Tate still doing? I mean, you can... uh, Khabib, he he quit fighting for his mother. And that's, that's something you can understand. But why did... You know, Tate stop. I don't know. Like, what is Tate up to these days? You know, you don't, you don't, you don't hear about it. I think if you don't hear about it, that's just that's just another way of saying they're not up to anything. <laughs> yeah, but they're. I, I feel like the reason why all these people are so popular, all these people are the most popular athletes in their respective sport. They have it even after they're done with their. They're thing. even. They have it even after they're done with their thing. But also, there was something about them initially that drew people to them. In a way that no other athlete, and it's not just the fact that they were good at something. I, I think I think it's something beyond that. Yeah, maybe a mindset thing. Their mentality, and their but their mentality is also what helped them become the best at the sport. It's the same. It's not different things we're talking about. I just think whatever it is, it helps them one become good at the sport, and also it draws people to them because it inspires people. Yeah, but then I feel like all these people have that even after. They accomplish whatever they, they it is that they're willing or that they wanted to accomplish. All these people have, yeah, yeah. Even after what they accomplish, what they want to accomplish, they still have it. I agree. If you were able to keep it to the point past money, then I think you can keep it forever. Maybe. Yeah. Like Jordan? I think Jordan might still have it. Really? I don't know much about Jordan. I, I don't know either. I, the last time, I, I haven't really seen him much. Yeah. Or seen much clips of him. Yeah. But I mean, Kobe kind of had that it. That one TikTok edit. Which one? Yeah. Well, that was during that was during the time. Maybe I. Maybe, maybe it's my weird. fault. Yeah. It's so hard. It's yeah. a hard TikTok edit. Yeah. Kobe had it. Yeah. That's what people like Kobe. You know, Jordan. Yeah, but Kobe wasn't near the best of his time and also of all time. But pe- there was something that drew people to Kobe. He did the best. I mean, I think to a certain extent, it's the it's that mentality, but also talent plays. He, he wasn't even the best player on his team. One could argue that Shaq was a much better player. And I don't know about that, but yeah, no, no, no. He because Shaq won them all their final. Their he he every time they won together, Shaq won Finals MVP. But Shaq didn't have that mindset. He could have been so much better. Yeah. So Shaq was, he was like Neymar. It's just a big what if. What if he didn't get fat? Yeah. Like Neymar. Yeah. I think everyone, the people with that mentality, no doubt they're going to be one of the greatest. But there are also people without that mentality, and they get really good, but they could have been so much better. I think when you, 
Kobe took it to the... B- it's almost like he used his potential. He used his potential. Is that why people were drawn to him? Over someone like Shaq or other people that were better than him in his, in his era? Yeah. It inspires people. Like Shaq, if you, if you see someone with just talent, and then, you know, most, let's face it, majority of people are, are not t- talented. Talented is what? Small fraction of people. We, we can get into what makes talent or how, how do people build talent, but it's, it's pointless. We will accept the fact that there are people with talent and their majority of people don't have that kind of talent. So what draws the majority of people? So who is the majority of people drawn to? The person with talent puts in no effort or the person who doesn't have as much talent, but he made himself one of the greatest by putting in the effort. The majority of people can relate to that guy more. Mm-hmm. I think that's what it is. That makes sense. Okay, how how would a person acquire, or how would the person even, how would a, a normal person, let's say some random dude that's sitting in his mom's basement watching this, mm-hmm. how does a person get to that level? Not that, in terms of professional sports, but just in terms of that mentality. That mindset? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm at that mindset because, one, I'm not. But I'm working on it, so I can I can share what I think. To get that kind of mindset where you're dedicating yourself to something beyond money, beyond all of that, okay, it's like these athletes. It depends where you start off from. If you start off at a point where you are completely broke. You have no mo- motiv- you have motivation no matter what, or at least I would hope. Okay? Yeah. I don't know who's happy broke, right? I mean, that's uh, in America, right? We're talking about America. Mm. Not uh, there's definitely tribal communities out there, but that's a completely different world. Yeah. In the America that we live in, who, who there's no one out there that's completely broke and happy. So you have a motivation, at least starting off, to get to that point where you're making a lot of money, okay? But if you're someone like me and your life is already well off, I think what, what you, the first realization that you have to have is that it, whatever you... I mean, m- m- these whatever in the, whatever worldly thing that you're looking for, it's it's not worth that much at the end. And I think that's kind of what I realized, and I mean, really realized, really realized meaning at every single point, every single point in my life, whenever I'm doing anything, I know that I'm working towards something more than just cars, money, whatever, right? <laughs> I know that none of that matters and that what matters truly is something more than that. I think once you realize that, then you realize, okay, you know, now that you realize none of that matters, you're striving for something more than that. Yeah, which in which you were saying their sports is legacy. Yeah. But out what, ex- externally, whatever it is you're doing. Externally it could be something something else. Yeah. Once you realize right, that, no, I'll no. hold you to that standard. Once if you, you if you buy if you buy a car what? that's any better than the BMW X5 or whatever you have right now. Whoa, whoa! Stop leaking my car. <laughs> first of all, second of all, I'll it's not it about out. the I'll fact. It it's not about the fact of whether you buy that car or not. Like Moha, uh, I don't know. Like Muhammad Ali, whatever. Well, I, I bet he drove a nice car, right? <clears throat> but it's the fact that you can buy that car and then you can still say, uh... You know, this means nothing to me. I, I bought this car because I can. Mm-hmm. Right? But it means nothing compared to what I want to do in this sport. Or what I want to do in the world. Or what I want to do in the world. So it's not. I, so I, I, I'm not saying you don't buy the car. Maybe you have, a, you have a loved one who really wants that car or something, you know? But yeah. That's what I would say. 
That makes sense. I'm gonna live in a. I'll live in a little shack next. Remember, we we had this plan until. <laughs> right. I'll live in a little shack next year. Uh, I don't know about. I don't know if I'll do that. Your giant mega billion dollar mansion. <laughs> there'll be a, there'll be a little tent next to it. That's where I'll live. Oh man, it's we're two kids talking about all this. We're gonna seem like such. We're gonna come off the wrong way to our audience. It doesn't matter. You'd be authentic. You shouldn't do things for your audience. It'll build around you naturally. Yeah, I guess. It's in my opinion. It's good to be ambitious. But just talking about it kind of seems, I don't know. We have to, we have to walk the talk. Or what yeah, is it? Do. Walk the walk? I don't walk, know. Yeah, talk the talk, walk the walk. Uh, no, yeah. I don't know if that's <laughs> what it is. No, what is it? I, I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Oops. I feel like there's also a lot of people that just don't know where to start, you know, with anything. Mm-hmm. They, they can't. They don't actualize a purpose that they're working for. For a lot of broke people, it's money, and that's why you see a lot of self-made millionaires. But you don't see any people that are middle class that become millionaires. Or you do see them, but they're very, yeah. very and far a lot between. of them don't want anything more. They're happy with the. They're happy with whatever they have. They want. They just want whatever life they have right now. And to do that, what do they need? the same job as their parents you know they don't need it they don't want anything more than that oh, i mean I, eh, not exactly these days but not yeah that's not true these days because of how much other external stuff is happening how much other the stuff you can get everything but they're not as ma- motivated as a poor person all right so let's say uh, there's definitely middle class so yeah for middle class people they want that lamborghini because whatever they're driving a bmw right but there's nothing there's the there's the positive but there's no negative for poor people there's also a negative they're living horribly but they also want that lamborghini yeah it's like a and double also also you know what i was thinking those poor people they have nothing to lose if they go all in yeah they're not losing anything yeah. a middle class family yeah they're losing a lot of things yeah by, by, yeah. by going that's all in. true as well yeah a lot of them and, s- and uh, a lot of people just develop that way to not be risk takers mm-hmm. yeah. versus a poor person it's like if i take this risk you know what's gonna happen? Yeah, yeah. If I put, I, can, I can't put up my house for collateral because I don't have one. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Maybe that's that's why you see even athletes. I was saying, a lot of people were in poverty. Yeah, like McGregor and Khabib and LeBron, LeBron and Jordan. But you know, one person, Kobe wasn't actually in poverty. I'm pretty sure Kobe was from a middle class family. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. He had something. He 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 had that. Yeah. You know. I don't know about Ali. He had Ali's that. from the streets of Chi Town, so I don't know. He yeah. might he might have been broke. Yeah. I, I I don't even know if LeBron has it. I mean, he might have it to nah, an extent. I, I don't think LeBron has it. But not to the extent that Kobe did. I don't think LeBron has it. Yeah. I think it's like when I look at LeBron, I don't feel, oh, for the lack of the better word. I don't feel the same aura, yeah. You know, as Kobe. It's or, gonna. This might come off wrong, but in that case, I think it's even harder for a middle class person to to go to make it to the high like high leagues than a poor person. Yeah. So basically, what you're saying is that if you're poor, you have an advantage. Yeah. <laughs> you might. <laughs> Sounds wrong when you think about it. You might. You might. Hard yeah. take. Yeah, that's a good take. <laughs> but. How many middle I mean, class okay, but then you, know you can, you still can. It's still a yeah, thing. Yeah, you still can. Nothing, you know. There's no, there's no limits on what yeah, you can yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of people just have these limits because that's just the way that they've been living since they were children. Yeah. Well, especially in regards to the middle class, because at yeah. least a poor person would be. A poor person doesn't. Yeah. They know that what they're living in is bad. Yeah. Yeah. And then when in the middle class, what you're living in is not bad. It's just middle, mm-hmm. as as indicated by the name. Yeah. You don't you don't really have a cognizant feel of this can be way better than it is right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in terms of living, you have the negative. Yeah, <laughs> that's how I describe it. You have what? You have the negative. It's like you have something you have something drawing you in, but also something pushing you forward. Yeah, you know. But then there's Kobe, who just who, who just he was drew himself in. Yeah. <laughs> is that how we're gonna describe it? I don't know. He ascended. <laughs> <laughs> My glorious. Nah, 
never mind. I'm not gonna make that joke. <laughs> <laughs> he outgrew. What? No, never mind. What's the? What's no, the? no, I grew. I was gonna say he he didn't say he came crashing back down. Bro. <laughs> Can't say that. I'm cutting that out. No, I'll keep that in. We're keeping that in. Um, I'm gonna make a short out of it. That'll be hilarious. That'll it's be disres- hilarious. It's disrespectful. it's disrespectful. No, it'll be a good joke. No. <laughs> Bro, stop. We can't be afraid to make jokes. Nah. I I wouldn't say that joke normally. It's disrespectful. No. It's not. It's fine. It's just something bro. that popped into my head. It's fine, bro. It's a joke. No, I can't disrespect the goat. Bro. I can't disrespect my man Kobe like that. Stop, bro. Rob that deep. Kobe would be like. He'd laugh. No, he would. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cutting it out. Mm-mm. I'm making a short out of it. It's on my phone. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Twitter is on my phone. But you're not there to drop it to me. I'll still have it. <laughs> nah. What? <laughs> Just stop me. No, your phone is only on you. What? I was the one that made the joke. Oh, but you have the audio. Fine. I'll get the Wait, audio. Don't. I'll get I'll, the I'll audio. Say it's, it's mis- I'll get the audio. <laughs> it's cut. It's cut. <laughs> I faked it. Yeah, false. Or I said it at a different point. Yeah. Can we go for 10 more minutes? Yeah, let's go. go for 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes is not that hard. Yeah. You just have to figure out how to get there. How to wrap this up. Yeah. Something pulling me in, you know. There's no risk to going 10 more minutes. All right. Takeaways. Nah, I feel like takeaways is... Okay, what is the takeaway? Okay. For... For the vast majority of this audience, who are probably middle class, you need to understand that it can be better. And that, and that, find I, I, I think find people, something to dedicate your effort towards. People because do. People we're do. living right now in, in. I've heard people describe this as an attention economy, where the thing. Success comes from where people dedicate their attention to. And a lot of people, especially middle class, are dedicating their attention to bad, or not bad, but how to describe, like unnecessary things. And when your energy is just going towards all these things, it's not going in anywhere. And there's that mentality of all in. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that, especially people like us, middle, middle upper class people, or children, teenagers, whatever, you should strive to be. Okay. I think people understand that it can be better. You know, when I look at a lot of these guys at our school, so they, they want to, they, they want to be, they want to be richer than their parents, right? They want to, I mean, be a upper class, but not that upper, upper class, you know? I mean, there's some at our school. Okay, what, about, what, about, what about takeaways? Don't set limits on yourself, on your potential. Okay. But here's the other thing I want to get to. You need to realize that there is the cars, the, I don't know, whatever you want, the house, the cars, that's not, the drugs. that's, that's not one, even one, even once the you get that amounts of cocaine. Yeah, sure. Even if you drugs, if you want to go that far, even once you get that, that's for even once you get that, it's, it's not going to, it's not going to really fulfill you. You know, what, what's going to fulfill you is knowing that because it's true. Not, none of it, I'll, I'll, I'll I'll assert this. None of it, none of it is going to fulfill you. So you need to find something more than that. And I think the people who do get, the people who get from middle class and to that upper level, they have something more than all of that. That's getting them there. Yeah. If you get, if it's like, it's like, it's like you're trying to get from point A to point B. And in the middle, the obstacles is the cars, the houses, the comfort, the co- the comfort. Once you go past that, that's when you will be truly fulfilled. Yeah, or truly great, yeah. as they'd like to say. Yeah. And we were talking. I mean, as in, in you terms can't of, set that as your goal. in terms of what what it can be outside. Yeah. Of just money or fame, a lot of people see legacy. Maybe. Yeah. A lot of people there. A lot of people say service to God. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Something external make outside the, of it. Make the world a better place. Yeah, make the world a better place. That's one of them. Yeah. Have the impact on others around you. That's, yeah, sure. that's some Your cars, when you die, it's gone. Your house, when you die, it's gone. I was thinking of something, but then while you were talking, I forgot. That legacy Before, won't go away. 
So you need to be drawn to that and not the cars and not the houses. And that's how you're going to become great. That's a good takeaway.